Hey everybody, this is a very large object here and I am giving you a video on a uh, on a controller that I got, uh, as you can probably tell. It is the M30 Bluetooth gamepad uh, from 8-Bit Do. Uh, this is Do, not Do. Um, that's what their speaker says. Uh, I would say, I want to say 8-Bit Do because that's, you know, sounds like Nintendo there. So the box goes off to the side here, and uh, let's uh, take a look. There we are. It's a very nice presentation here. Good, good clear plastic, protecting it. <clears throat> it has an instruction manual and a cable. Now, here's the controller itself. It does charge with USB-C. Um, and as you can hear it, it's not super clicky. Um, the buttons, they're soft, which is good. You don't want super hard buttons when you're, when you're playing. Um, the only clicky buttons you should really have are the ones that you don't use very often. Um, usually really small ones like this. Um, start button is nice. It gives you nice feedback, but it's not um, super loud. It does have L and R buttons in this case. Um, it is a Bluetooth controller, um, as you can see here. You can choose what system you want it to be connected to. Switch, D input, which would be um, every button counts as like either, I think like a, like a number on the, uh, or letter on the keyboard. <clears throat> uh, let's see, X input, which is, exact, is uh, you know, Microsoft's um, Xbox controller input, and Mac OS. Uh, you can't use it for iOS. Um, that is unfortunate, um, but uh, to be honest, to be kind of fair here, <clears throat> I'm going to be playing this mainly just with uh, Genesis games emulated um, when I get to the Aya Neo. Uh, so this is the sync button here. And then, yeah, I don't want it to be super, like, uh, what is it? grainy here, but it's, it's, I'm going to have to run a denoiser through this. Uh, but yeah, each button is nice, and it's a concave here and convex here, so it's a good, you can really tell here. So it'd be like this, the Genesis uh, six-button controller, um, not the standard three-button controller that um, the Genesis had from the beginning. Um, the D-pad is on a rocker, so it, um, as you can see, the conca concavity here, it's rather nice. Um, I do have another controller here. Let me actually grab that for us here. Here's the other controller that 8-bit, uh, uh, do makes. Um, this one has analog sticks and such. Um, this um, is modeled off of the um, the SNES. So these are concave. These are convex. Does actually let you tell, you know, what button you're pressing here. Um, the D-pad on this one is a little bit more um, it's more stiff than the one on here, which is, I believe, exactly how it would be on an actual SNES controller vers and versus a uh, Genesis controller. I kind of would like this one with the extra stuff of the sticks. Um, if 8-bit uh, do can do that, that'd be really great. Like an M30 Pro? Um, if they don't have that already, um, because it is missing ZR, ZL, 
Um, but again, what I'm going to be playing with this, I'm not going to need it. Um, so it's, I'm mainly going to be playing, um, Genesis games like Sonic and stuff on this, which, uh, the D-pad here would be perfect for that. And, um, some of the fighting games as well. Um, because it's a dish, you can sort of do the circles super easy. Um, the start button is right there in the center, um, just as it should be. It is actually indeed using a different mold than the start select buttons on this, which is about right. Um, interesting at the time, so in the 90s um, and late 80s, uh, buttons were like a pill shape. Um, with like uh, these uh, start, select, and such. Um, I have an old Wheel of Fortune handheld, um, and it has these buttons as well, these pills. So that's a really good, um, what is it, attention to detail in there. This controller here has the same deal here. It actually even has, this isn't yellowed from, sorry about that. This isn't actually yellowed from uh, use. This is yellowed from the factory, so it sort of looks like it's classic. Classic controller there. So this one does have ZR, ZL, and has all the buttons that you need for a 360, uh, Xbox One, uh, PlayStation controller. Um, so these sticks are in the right orientation for PlayStation um, 1, 2, and 3. Um, so I'll probably be playing uh, some of the emulation stuff uh, through here. Um, when I have my system um, in like tabletop orientation. Uh, I do like the D-pad here, but I think this will be more um this would be more comfortable over long periods of time than this one will be. But this will be perfect for Mario because Mario is a very um, uh, direct input here. Sonic's more floaty, so I can sort of um, take for granted that this is a more floaty D-pad. Um, other than that, uh, we have a little instruction manual here. Uh, Bluetooth gamepad instruction manual. Uh, I'm thinking. Jeez. Uh, All right. Yeah. So exactly as I thought it would be. So there's the home. So let's see. So there is. I believe this is for home. Oh no! I I dropped it. What does it say? Select start home. Ah, so star is, I believe, screenshot on the switch. This is home. And then this is start select. So, but no, I gotta be honest here. These are really nice. They're all consistent all throughout. And they don't sound too loud if I were to be playing this at night. Um, the controller fits in the hand really nicely. Um, I don't know if it's my hands. Um, I don't know if it's like if I have like smaller or larger hands than the usual person. But um, this cups perfectly in the hand. Um, I did see that there was a um, there was another company that was making a. Um, that was making a uh, Sega Saturn controller. And I thought that was rather interesting as well. Um, I think the Saturn might be a little more, more comfortable for people that are used to um, more traditional controllers that have like longer um, prongs at the end. Um, obviously, this doesn't have any prongs. So it's just like this. So you're holding like that and playing. So you sort of have to like cup it this way 
up here at the top as opposed to down here at the bottom. So it's a little different placement here, but honestly, you're not gonna really be able to notice too much. This is also really comfortable, um, at least in my hands. Like I am the exact hand size, I guess, that they're expecting for this. Um, when Nintendo designed the original shape. Um, and then 8-bit uh, do, when they use this type of design, um, they actually have these analog humps on the back. Um, that's just so that they can actually get these to fit. Um, but actually what it ends up doing, it gives me another spot here to lay my finger so that I can hold it more firmly. Uh, this one doesn't really need that because all the buttons are at the top here. So my thumb can stay here and the controller can stay buried in my palm like that. Um, I don't know how these are going to be mapped. I know A, B, X, uh, A, B, X, Y, right? These will be mapped like this. And then I believe these are the triggers. Oh, um, when games are ported to the uh, Sega Genesis, um, you had um, A, B, X, Y, but on this one you have A, B, X, Y. It's like flipped. Um, so for some people, that might be a little bit of a... Um, a little bit confusing to begin with. Um, and then you have these two here. This is actually pretty ideal for fighting games um, where you don't actually have to use the bumpers at the top to actually play any of them. So really, I can I can hold it like this without my, um, so I can put my fingers here. Um, actually, I'll put um, my, I put these fingers down there. So then the other finger's just like sitting out in space. Um, so if I ever needed to, I could, but um, to be honest, having them floating around, that's perfectly fine. It's really comfortable. So I think I talked enough about this controller. Um, so this uh, again is, uh, I got it off Amazon. Um, I got it renewed because um, it's currently, uh, you can get it like next month. Um, when they get the stock back in. Um, but renewed, this, if you can tell me, how does this look renewed? I'm looking really hard here. And I don't see where anybody's really plugged it. Let's look at the charging port here. Like, that's not, that doesn't even look like anything was plugged into it before. I think this is the mold yeah yeah so it doesn't look like it's been used so somebody bought it and they must have gone oh well i want the analog sticks and probably bought something else um i'm fine i don't need it um some of the games i'm playing i can even play like pokemon or whatever <laughs> emulation on this um which would be fine for me because i i think the d-pad um, it's really comfortable here, so I play it that way as, uh, uh, as what is it, uh, as much of a sin as that would be. So as you can see here, I have both those controllers together, size, uh, about the same in terms of width. Um, the, this one's a little bit, um, slimmer but it is, um, I believe, just a little bit taller, as you can see. But yeah, so I believe I got this for 30 bucks. Um, and for a $30 controller um, that's wireless and charges via USB-C, um, I don't think you can really go wrong with this if you plan to do retro emulation. Um, so I'll see you guys on my next video and, uh, uh, stay safe out there. Peace out.